Hello everyone and welcome to the racing show. We've gone on the road this week. We're live from Eagle Farm in Brisbane. A big race day here, the Queensland Oaks. It's ladies day. It's going to be a great race card, I can assure you. And John Tapp, he's just having an easy day down in Sydney today. But we have plenty of experts on the panel as usual. Ken Callender, Alan Thomas and Shane Dyer with us. Good morning to you fellas. Ken, you in particular, you look pretty fresh. But a week in this beautiful Queensland sunshine, Simon. All I'd need now is blinkers and I'll be worth back. <laughs> you do look very, very fresh. Now, we have a full team on deck for you today and the man that's going to tell us all about the track is Simon Marshall. word I've got for today's meeting at Eagle Farm, pristine. The weather is fine, the track is good and the rail's in the true position. Let's have a look at some scratchings for today's card. In race one, number 14, Ridge Top is out. And in race three, number three, Free Mover is out. And in important scratching in race five, the size produce stakes, number 12, Curio Jade's out. That's all from me, Simon. It's back to you. Thanks very much, Simon. Now, the Queensland Oaks, as I mentioned earlier, that's the big race here today for the three-year-old fillies. And we've got the market for you now. Ken, let's uh, have a peek at it. Yeah, Melora, good alley last week. 16 today is favoured at 5-2 to two, uh, in uh, Michael Sullivan's markets. 7-2, to two, Lavalda. Uh, Colin Alderson's very good filly. Six to one, uh, Zacheline, the South Australian Oaks winner and only a lady. Seven to one, Palia from New Zealand. Nine to one, Midnight Babe from New Zealand. And twelves and over the rest. Five to two, Melora. Seven to two, Lavalda. Let's have a look at that South Australian Oaks, eh? Why not? It's uh, you know, a race, I suppose, that's very prominent here today with uh, particularly Zacheline and Lavalta. Yeah, here's uh, uh, Zacheline going to the front for Shane Dye, and now Lavalta out after her. She's not going to quite get her, but gets very close at the finish. Shane Dye, uh, they let you slip away a bit here, probably. Uh, you rode her pretty well. Yeah, thanks, Ken. That's nice of you to say, but um, <laughs> she really did stay the 2400. Both fillies did, and they're going to have no trouble with the journey today. They're both going to be very, very competitive. The thing about them, what they've got over the other two fillies in Malara and um, Only a Lady, is the barrier draw. The vault is drawn very, very well at three, and she's going to get the best run in the race. Are you Let's going to go it. straight up to the lead again today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The Doombin Roses, that was the other race that... Uh, uh, I'll tell you what, firstly, I, I think, Alan, you caught up with John Wheeler during the well, week. Well, John, John Wheeler thinks Midnight Babe had no luck at all in the, in the South Australian Oaks. He's not conceding defeat to these other fillies today, and this is what he had to say on Thursday morning at Eagle Farm. John, her run in the South Australian Oaks, you're giving this filly some chance. Yeah, it wasn't a bad run. It doesn't look so good on paper, but she was uh, she drew wide and was caught wide at the back of the field and uh, covered a fair bit of ground in the race. And uh, she got home all right. She just capitulated the last two or three hundred metres, but she had to really. She covered a heap of ground. All right. So you have to race La Volta and those sort of horses again here. Yeah, they're tough fillies, they're good fillies. It's probably the best uh, Oaks field we've seen up here, I'd say, in my lifetime, anyhow. Uh, I'm not that old, though. You might remember some tougher ones, maybe, Alan. But, um, yeah, it's a top field. But my horse will be a chance. I'm just hoping I draw a decent marble and I can be there all the way. Yes, um, interesting words from John Wheeler. The other two horses Shane mentioned before, um, one of them being Melora, the other only a lady, they ran in the Doom and Roses. Yeah, the last Saturday this was. I thought Jim Byrne was a bit impatient on only a lady. She shot to the lead at the top of the straight. Uh, and Melora, who was sort of running third or fourth on the rails, just followed her out, got out whenever she li liked and beat her comfortably. I don't know that she'll get that run today. Ken, this is a sign of a very good filly, Melora. She put paid on very quick and sprinted really, really fast this day. I thought her win was very, very impressive. The only problem is Roger James doesn't know whether she can back up or not. And she's got 16 alley, Shane. Might be able to get across early. Alan, you caught up with uh, Roger James. Roger, yeah, his, the original plans for this horse was to bypass the Oaks and run in the Derby. Um, and all of a sudden, the, the, the plans changed and Malora was lining up today. So when I caught up with Roger James on Thursday, obviously, I said, why the change in plans? I never made a commitment that I'd run in the Derby, but I thought it was a strong option because I was a little bit worried about backing her up so quickly. Prior to um, now, she has never backed up closer than a month. Um, but we had a long, hard think about it. She appears to, to have come through her run last week very well, and uh, we thought if we missed the Oaks, on the, which hopefully will be run on a good track, and uh, waited for the Derby and got a wet track, really we've missed our go at everything. Mark, were you disappointed with only a lady's performance last week? Uh, not slightly disappointed, but uh, I think the winner was, was a very good mare too. Um, I think we've got a little bit of improvement in us for the Oaks. Um, 
and just hope the other filly doesn't back up as good, that's all. Mm. She'd have to improve a bit only a lady to beat Malora on what they did last week, wouldn't she? I think she would have to, yeah. But you've got to be there and try to. Yes, another of the big races on the card today is the QTC Cup. Let's take a look at the market for that race now. Ken, 3-1 to one favourite, Laguna. Yeah, 3-1 to one favourite, uh, the Clary Connors trained Laguna. Stepping up in grade, but very promising. Scandinavia, I like her. I think she'll run well. She's at 7-2. to two. 6 to 1, the query horse, Al Mansour. 10 alley, 59 kilos. Sahara Z, the other Queenslander, at 6-1. to 8-1, to one, Mr Newmarket. And 12's Mast Party in City Hall. 16's and over others. Well, Al Mansour is the key to the race. I mean, he hasn't raced since the Carlton Cup when he sort of ripped, his, ripped a muscle. Um, I got up to Thornhill Park on Thursday morning, and when you see these pictures, you can see just how well he looks, Al Mansour, and I found out from Bruce McLaughlin just exactly where the horse is at. Al Mansour, give us an update. Well, he, you had a look at him there. He looks terrific. He had a setback, as you know, in the, uh, the race at Doombin. We're happy with the way he's done, although you're still catching up, and, uh, you know, we feel he'll run very well in the Qantas Cup. He's got a lot of weight. And uh, if he comes through that, well, well, we go on to the straight break from there. But we're more than happy with, with the horse. And he hasn't missed a great deal of work. And he has worked brilliantly in the last uh, 10 days. So if he can run this race and come through it and then pull up well, well, I think he'll be right in the straight break. Yeah, Scandinavia and Laguna are two of the other great chances in this race today. The last time they stepped out was in the Goodwood in Adelaide and uh, both pretty good runs, Kent. Yes, uh, Scandinavia are in, uh, in this race. And uh, I think that she's a very, very good filly. Uh, she gets to the line well, but the winner, the Perth horse, is just too strong and uh, goes home much better than her. She's a filly that's been a little unlucky. I, I think she d deserves to win a big race. Yeah, here's Laguna. Um, he's been impressive, but he hasn't made horses like this today. These are second-rate horses he's been beating in Sydney and uh, in Brisbane like this. But you've got to remember, Scandinavia's been winning or running in Group 1 races, uh, drops today in class, whereas this other horse goes up in class, and that could be the difference. But Scandinavia, I think, will beat Laguna myself. And uh, El Mansour, 59 kilos, 10 alley. I don't know if he can carry that and beat these horses at his top. If he can do it today, I'll be surprised. I might have to go and get a fair dinkum job if he can do that, Al. I think I'm not a race course tipster. If it happens to win today, the Stradbroke market will be in total disarray. Will it what? Yeah, well, i tell you what was in disarray last week was um, the Queensland-New South Wales relationship. And as we go to the break, we give you one of your favourite Queenslanders, Trevor Gilmeister. He's going to give us our celebrity tip. Well, my tip today in the Queensland Oaks is Pallia, trained by Laurie Laxon. And it's ridden by informed jockey Greg Charles at a big autumn carnival. It's drawn 11, but that won't be a problem, and it should be at each way odds. Come on. And Dracula winding up. Here he comes. Dracula down the outside with the last swoop at the 200. And Happy and You Know It is just the leader from Dracula Mossman between them. Not getting a lot of room. Happy and You Know It and Dracula Mossman's a half length away. Happy and You Know It. Dracula on the outside. The Colt and the Philly. It's a head bobber. Dracula. Dracula wins the Champagne Stakes about a short... Yes, Dracula winning the Champagne Stakes there at Randwick. And that horse is one of the favourites for the Sires. Over 1,400 metres here today. Let's take a look at the market right now. And Ken, uh, he sh should be on top at 5-2. to two. Yeah, I just think uh, the wet tracks may have flattered him a little bit. He's at 5-2. to two. Mossman at 7-2. to 6-1 to one lease. Very promising, but just might be a bit early for him.